Hey everyone, my name is Mary Beth Caldwell and I'm a third grade math and science teacher at Laurel Magnet School of the Arts in Laurel, Mississippi. Today, I'm gonna to be talking with you about equivalent fractions. But before we begin, I wanna draw your attention to my orange rectangle down here that talks about virtual manipulatives. If you have a device at home where you can find this um, site, www.toytheater.com forward slash fraction strips, you can possibly follow along with me and practice later. Now, I want to begin with our standard, which is 3NF3D. Compare two fractions with the same numerator or the same denominator by reasoning about their size. Recognize that comparisons are valid only when the two fractions refer to the same whole. Record the results of comparisons with the symbols less than, greater than, or equal to, and justify the conclusions by using a visual fraction model. Now, three words stick out to me immediately when reading this standard. The first two should be pretty obvious and they are numerator and denominator. A numerator is what goes on the top of the fraction, and it refers to the part of the whole that we're describing. For instance, in our example here, it is two because there are two parts shaded. The second word, denominator, refers to our total or our whole. So here there are three parts, so three is our denominator. The third word is a little more complex and it might be new to some of you. That word is equivalent. Equivalent is just a fancy word for equal. So we're gonna put this on our word wall and come back to it in just a little bit. When equivalent fractions are shown, that means that they take up the same amount of space in a model. For example, one half takes up the same amount of space as two-fourths, so they are equal. But before we begin, I want to show you two pieces of paper. Now, you might be wondering what I'm going to do with these pieces of paper. Well, I think I'm just going to rip them. Y'all know what a half is? Let's rip this one in half and rip that one in half. Now, let's say I want to give you one, so here's your halves. When we look at the halves, you should think, okay, hmm, let's go down to my board. I have one blue piece out of two blue pieces that I had to begin with. And then for the yellow, I also am looking at just one piece, and I had two after I split them, one half and one half. So why in the world, if I have one of two blue pieces and one of two yellow pieces, are these not the same or equivalent? Well, let's refer to the whole. When we had the whole blue piece of paper and the whole yellow piece of paper. The holes were not the same size. Let's take a look back at our standard. It tells us to recognize that comparisons are valid only when the two fractions refer to the same whole. These papers were not the same. We do not want them. Speaking of that, are you hungry? I'm getting a little hungry. My favorite pizza place in my hometown is Itza Pizza. Would you like a piece? I cut it into fourths. Here's a piece for you. Now, I'm really hungry. So, ugh, ugh, I got a jumbo pizza, extra large, because I'm starving. But I wanted to be fair, so I cut mine in fourths too, and I'm just gonna eat one piece. Uh-oh, I bet you're noticing something right now. I gave you one-fourth, and I'm eating one-fourth for myself, but they're not the same. 
Why is that? Oh, I hope you remembered your standard. They have to refer to the same whole or it's not valid. Valid only when the two fractions refer to the same whole. Your pizza and my pizza were not the same size, so we cannot even compare those pizza slices. Now, what we can do is look at some problems that can be compared. And we're gonna start with Caleb and Lila eating some pizza. Now, our question reads, Caleb and Lila each have their own pizza. Their pizzas are the same size. Caleb's pizza is cut into eight pieces and Lila's pizza is cut into 10 pieces. They each eat two pieces of pizza. Who ate more pizza? Well, can you look at the question and identify a piece of really, really important information? Very good. I hope that you notice that it says their pizzas are the same size. Well, lucky for them, because their holes are the same, we can compare them. So let's look at the details of the problem. Caleb's pizza was cut into eight pieces, whereas Lila's pizza was cut into 10 pieces. But that last sentence is pretty important. It tells us that they each eat two pieces of pizza. Let's go to our small board and let's draw what that might look like. Again, in pink we see that their pizzas are the same size. So when you come to your drawing board or your journal or wherever you may be following along, make two holes that are the same. Now, Caleb's pizza is cut into eight pieces. So I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to do a half, a not line across to make it fourths. And we know that four times two is eight, which means I need to split, split each of these pieces into two more pieces. So I'm just gonna draw an X. Now, the other side is cut into tenths, which is a little more difficult to draw, so y'all bear with me as I make this work. There should be five slices on each side. Now, again, mine's not perfect, and yours may not be either, but as long as there are 10 total pieces, it works just fine. I'm gonna take a break from my marker, and I'm gonna pull some fraction strips to better show you the sizes. Lila had two tenths, and Caleb ate two eighths. When you look at those two fractional pieces, what is something that you notice? Some of you may notice that each of them ate two pieces, which means their numerator was two. However, their total or their denominator is different. Caleb had eight pieces and Lila had 10. Hmm, let's take a break and let's look up behind me. I noticed that on my chart here in pink, when we have the same numerator, there's a little chant that we can do together. It says, the smaller the number, the bigger the piece. And then you can switch it up and say, the bigger the number, the smaller the piece. Now again, this is with the same numerator. We will look at the denominator and say, the smaller the number, the bigger the piece. The bigger the number, the smaller the piece. My kids love saying that, and it helps them remember, if I have the same numerator, just do my chant. 
all right? And what that means in our pizza problem is that if I have a smaller denominator, my pieces are actually bigger. When I have a bigger number, my pieces end up being smaller. Think of it as a birthday party. If you go to a birthday party and you invite eight friends, you'll have slices, eight slices of pizza, the certain size, whatever it ends up being. But then what if you had a party that had 15 people? The more people that show up, so the bigger the number, the smaller those pieces become. So that's what happened to Caleb, Caleb and Lila. So let's look back down. Even though this eight is smaller than 10, the pieces themselves are larger. So my larger fraction is gonna receive two dots. My smaller fraction is going to have just one dot. And when I connect them, I can understand that two eighths pieces is greater than two tenths pieces. And again, whether you draw that yourself or whether you look at your fraction pieces, you can see that that is true. You can also read it backwards as two tenths is less than two eighths. Let's look at another problem. Here, we're gonna talk about Karen's two models. Which inequality can Karen conclude from her figures? Now, the word inequality might stick out to you here and you might be wondering what in the world is an inequality? Well, if we go to our word wall, I can remind you that an inequality is when something is not equal so you compare it using less than, greater than, or equal to. And I wanna draw your attention to if it's something is less than, it will have a single dot or the closed portion of our symbol. The greater than symbol is going to be open to the fraction that is greater. So I like to put two dots or again, just refer to it as the open side. And of course, if the two fractions have the same amount of space, they would be equal to. So let's go back to Karen. Which inequality can Karen conclude from her figures? Well, let's look at Karen's figures. Here, how many does Karen have shaded? Excellent. She has three shaded. How many total parts does she have for our denominator? Five, very good. On her other figure, she also has three shaded, so same numerator. However, how many total pieces are there? There are only four. Hmm, what do you notice about the size of the pieces? They're both three, but the bigger the number, the smaller the piece. The smaller the number, the bigger the piece. When our numerator is the same and we have a larger number of pieces, our pieces get smaller. The bigger the number, the smaller the piece. The smaller the number, because this one only has four, the smaller the number, the bigger the piece. So because they both ate three and fourths pieces are bigger, we can tell that three fourths is greater than three fifths. So I'm gonna put two dots on this side and one dot on this side. And when I connect them, I can say that three fifths is less than three fourths. Or three fourths is greater than three fifths. Now, we are giving answer choices here. So when we're trying to eliminate things that might be incorrect, I first wanna look at the fractions that I know are correct here. Three fifths and three fourths. A has three fifths and three fourths. B has three fifths and three fourths. But C and D, something's different about those fractions. Do you know what it is? 
Yes, they have their numerator and denominator flipped. So these fractions do not match our figures. So we can eliminate those. Same thing here. The denominator is flipped. It's saying 5 thirds and 4 thirds as opposed to 3 fifths and 3 fourths. So we can eliminate D as well. When we look back at A and B, remember that 3 fourths was the greater side, so it was open. And 3 fifths was less, so it was closed. So which of our answer choices is closed to 3 fifths and open to 3 fourths? Yes, letter A. So A would be our correct answer here. Now we've got one last problem that I want to do with you. And this is going to deal with some drawing. So if you're on our virtual manipulatives page and you can get out some fraction strips or some fraction circles like I have here, you can create figures along with me. I'm going to bring my whiteboard back over here. My question says, write greater than, less than, or equal to, to compare the fractions. And actually, I'm just going to write right here on my poster. A says two-thirds blank two-sixths. Do you notice anything about the numerator or the denominator in this answer choice? I notice that the numerator is the same. And when the numerator is the same, I can say, the smaller the number, the bigger the piece. The bigger the number, the smaller the piece. Or I could draw it. So I know that the smaller the number, the bigger the piece, and I'm gonna think that that's greater than and open to two thirds. But let's draw it to be sure. If I have a figure with three parts, or I have a figure with, ooh, and that hole is not the same. Let's try that again. a figure with six parts and I color two of these and two of these. These parts are bigger so this fraction is going to be greater than this fraction. So let's draw our two dots on this side, our single dot on that side and connect it. And remember that's either two-thirds is greater than two-sixths or two-sixths is less than two-thirds. Let's do another one. Three-fourths blank four-fourths. Now, we haven't seen one like this. this. These two fractions don't have the same numerator. They have the same what? Denominator. Very good. Let's go to the wall behind me. When we have the same denominator, we simply compare the two numerators, which are the two numbers on top. So let's go back to our problem. If our parts are in fourths, that means that all of the pieces are the same size. So if this circle is in fourths and this circle is in fourths, the pieces are all the same. However, this fraction has three shaded and this one has all four shaded. So we can visually see that four fourths has more shaded than three fourths. So 3 fourths is the smaller fraction and 4 fourths is the larger fraction. When we connect it, we read 3 fourths is less than 4 fourths or 4 fourths is greater than 3 fourths. C, 5 eighths and 5 sixths. We're back to our numerators being the same, so the bigger the number, the smaller the piece. The smaller the number, the bigger the piece. So because our numerators are the same, I know that the bigger number has smaller pieces. So these five pieces are smaller than these five pieces. But let's make a visual model to make sure. If I have two holes that are the same size, because remember the holes must be the same, and this figure has eight parts. Ooh, we're going to pretend like that's equal, okay guys? And this one has six parts. Shading five of these 
and shading five of these, you can see that there's much more white space left over here. So this uh, fraction covers more area. So just like we thought, 5 eighths is less than 5 sixths, or 5 sixths is greater than 5 eighths. Now for the last one. It tells us 1 half blank 1 half. Well, boys and girls, if we have the same fraction on both sides, there's no need to even draw a model, though Miss Caldwell's going to anyway because her students know better. And if I have one of two shaded here and one of two shaded here with the holes being the same size, those are going to be equal to. I hope that today you'll be able to remember about when you have fractions that have the same numerator or same denominator to compare the inequalities and decide if they are less than, greater than, or equal to. Your I can statement says I can compare fractions with the same numerator or same denominator with a visual fraction model. And of course, at home, you have your virtual manipulatives that you can go to and practice yourself. So grab a sibling or a parent and get to work on finding those equivalent fractions. Thanks again. Bye.